On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Dan Roth joins us to get us excited about Tuesday's .NET Conf Focus on Blazor. Hi, welcome to the first Visual Studio Toolbox of 2020. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me is Dan Roth. Hey, Dan. Hello. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks. Good to be here. And we are all very excited here about Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. January 14th. Which is the .NET Conf Focus on Blazor. Yes. A day-long deep dive into all things Blazor. Yep. Well, probably not all things, because well, it's, it's a day, but lots of cool things Blazor. We'll have people from the product team. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have people from the community giving all sorts of pretty awesome and cool talks about things related to Blazor, things that we're working on, things that we've already shipped. It should be pretty fun. So this is kind of an, uh, an extension of the .NET Conf, the typical uh, thing that happens on an annual basis. It's usually two or three days, but now that's been expanded to these individual focus days. Tell us a, a little bit about that. Well, usually .NET Conf is a yearly event. Mm -hmm. uh, we typically do that sometime at near the end of the year, and we have, like you said, multiple, multiple days of content, cover all things .NET. Um, but it was just too long to wait in, in between each of those, uh, the, those events, so we thought, well, maybe we could do a few more .NET Confs uh, in between to cover uh, specific topics in a more deep way, mm -hmm. and uh, we decided to do uh, the, the first uh, focused .NET Conf on Blazor. Cool. So uh, today's episode is a bit of a teaser for that. So we want you guys to show up on Tuesday uh, for it live. It's focus.netconf.net. That's right. Good. This is the website. <laughs> uh, you yep. can take a look. We got a whole bunch of great speakers that are queued up. Uh, including myself and people from the from the ecosystem, people from from Microsoft, uh, we'll be showing things that good friend are, Ed, friend of the show, has yeah. been on the show multiple times talking about Blazor. Yeah, a bunch of uh, partner people, partner uh, companies that have been working on Blazor component mm -hmm. libraries and. Uh, people have just been active in the ecosystem, building great open source projects. Like uh, uh, has been working on a great testing library. Mm -hmm. uh, some stuff that we're working on in the future. You know, looking at how can we take Blazor um, beyond the web, not just doing web applications, Ooh. but also doing maybe uh, native mobile desktop applications, those types of Ooh. things. We'll be that talking about intriguing. all that stuff at, at BlazorConf. You can check out the full agenda, like you said, at focus.netconf.net. Uh -huh. There's all the right. full full list of talks. So let's just take a, a short amount of time and uh, give us an overview of Blazor. Um, we've, we've had it on the show a number of times. A lot of people are fairly familiar with it, but some people might be new to it. So give us the high-level overview, and that will get people even more excited about Tuesday. Sure. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to. I have a little uh, diagram here to, to help out. Cool. So if you're a, if you're a .NET dev, um, I am. Building, been building web applications, then uh, you're probably familiar with our various server-rendered uh, web frameworks that we've shipped over the years uh, under the ASP.NET brand, mm -hmm. uh, ASP.NET Web Forms, ASP.NET Web Pages, MVC. We have, we have a whole buffet of, of yes. uh, server-rendered web frameworks that you can use, and they all uh, share one characteristic in common, which is you, you write your code and you run it on the server, and, it's, and that code then generates some HTML or some JSON uh, that then gets sent down to the browser and, and rendered. Right. But if you ever wanted to do something that actually ran on the client machine, like in the browser itself, well, that meant you had to use one of these guys. You had to use some sort of JavaScript mm -hmm. framework, like Angular, React, Vue, or whatever your, your favorite JavaScript framework of the day is, um, which is fine. But having to, to bridge those two different uh, developer uh, ecosystems, you know, there's, there's a cost to that. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, I, uh, I'm... My strengths tend to be more in, in .NET and, mm -hmm. and writing C Sharp. Uh, I can write some JavaScript, but you know, it's not my forte. Right. Uh, I think of this uh, as being very similar to like uh, human spoken languages. You know, my, my, uh, my, my first language is, is English, and I know English pretty well. I can speak a little bit of, of Portuguese, yeah. but uh, uh, you know, don't get too far beyond like, hello, my name is, and where's the bathroom, you know, those, those types of things. I think developer skill sets are kind of similar. There's, yeah. there's, tools and languages that you're really fami familiar with and strong with, and then there's others that uh, you know, uh, maybe you uh, would prefer to avoid if you, if you could. An uh, ideal world is where you can leverage what you already know and move to different places instead of going to those different places and having to start from scratch. Exactly. And so that's uh, what Blazor is really all about, is enabling full stack web development with .NET, where you can use C Sharp, .NET, Visual Studio, on um, both sides of the, uh, mm -hmm. the wire. 
Uh, and we think you know this probably has a, a lot to um, to appeal to uh, even people who are new to .NET as well. Uh, you get to leverage the the tooling, great tooling that's in Visual Studio. You have a you know very stable set of uh, 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 build tools, mm -hmm. libraries, languages that you get to leverage when you're building on top of the .NET ecosystem. Right. And because it's .NET and you can do C Sharp, it works the same. Exactly. Right? Yeah, you can um, you Obviously. can share code at this right. point. When you have uh, uh, .NET on both sides of the wire, you now have a full stack solution. If you mm -hmm. have some some model types or some validation logic, instead of having to rewrite that code twice, say once right. in .NET and then once in, in JavaScript, uh, you can just reuse the same assemblies even on, on both sides of the wire. Cool. So we've been working on this for a while um, to enable full stack development for the web with C Sharp and JavaScript uh, on top of like a core capability of being able to uh, leverage the browser with, with .NET code. Uh, we built a, a reusable uh, component UI framework uh, on top. Uh, so you can build your UI as a set of components. The components can call other components. Uh, you can grab components off of the off of NuGet or from mm -hmm. you know various component vendors and use them in your applications. So you can build your app really really fast. Um, you get the benefits of .NET on both sides of the wire. Uh, and if you do need to dive down into JavaScript, uh, we still give you the capability of doing that. Kind of like, I think it was like a P invoke in, uh, in .NET world. Yeah. If, you, if you need to call down to native code, that's still possible. Okay. Uh, it's not the you know, most common thing in the world, but with Blazor, that's, that's possible as well, where you can call down into JavaScript libraries if you have existing libraries that you still want to leverage okay. and reuse. Uh, to get started with Blazor, you just go to blazor.net. Mm -hmm. um, you'll need .NET Core 3.1, which we just shipped very recently. Uh, .NET Core 3.1 is a long-term support release, yep. and it includes Blazor, specifically includes support for what we call Blazor Server. Um, Blazor Server is a mode for Blazor where your code still is running on the server, but we manage all the client-side UI over a real-time uh, WebSocket connection, over using SignalR under the covers, if okay. you're familiar with ASP.NET uh, Core SignalR. Yep. Um, that's in the box with .NET Core 3.1, um, has the full support lifecycle. Uh, you can use it in production today. Uh, we've also been working on a second uh, mode for Blazor that we call Blazor WebAssembly. Uh, Blazor WebAssembly runs in the browser on a WebAssembly-based .NET, uh, uh, .NET runtime. So you can download your assemblies into the browser and execute them directly. Uh, that's still in preview, but you can try that as out as well by installing our uh, Blazor WebAssembly templates. So what's templates. the primary use case for server mode versus client mode? Do you mix and match? So, uh, well, server is what's available today. Mm -hmm. um, so that if you were trying to write an app that's going to go into production right now, you're going to want to use Blazor Server. Uh, Blazor Server is really great for a number of, re of reasons. Um, the app, uh, it stays on the server, so it has a very thin client, um, which means you don't need to download very much to get it up and running. So the app starts uh, really fast. Uh, it doesn't require much from the client device to actually execute, because most mm -hmm. of the guts are going to run server-side in a Blazor server application. But you still get all the benefits of that component model, of, the, of having a, you know, what is effectively a single-page app, you know, a spa, but written in C, in C Sharp. So that's the okay. nice thing about Blazor Server. Um, Blazor WebAssembly allows you to actually leverage the client device. Like your code will move to the, uh, to the client, and you can uh, you know, leverage the, the hardware and compute and memory that the client machine has. Um, they can, uh, Blazor WebAssembly apps can run offline because, mm -hmm. well, you, you ship the code over into the client and you're running it there. You don't actually technically need a server piece in order for the app to, to function, whereas okay. with a Blazor server app, uh, yeah, you do. Got and it. then if you need any like really tight, low latency UI interactions, like if you're trying to do a drawing app, Blazor WebAssembly, you're right there on the user's machine. With a Blazor server app, those, those don't work quite as well sure. because you're going over the network for your UI gestures. Okay. Yep. And you can get all, any, any version of Visual Studio you want. Uh, the latest version of VS on Windows, uh, VS for Mac 8.4 has mm -hmm. Blazor tooling support. That should be shipping uh, any day now yep. if it hasn't already shipped uh, already. And then we also have tooling available in Visual Studio Code. Cool. So I thought I would show you a quick uh, yeah. Blazor application. Let's see. Let me hop over to just uh, show you the Blazor.net pa uh, page. This is where you go ahead and get started. Click on Get Started at Blazor.net. And this has all those steps that I just went through for getting okay. the machine set up. To create your first application, you're just going to file new project and select Blazor app. That'll show up in the template list. Blazor app one sounds like a lovely name. And then I'm going to pick the Blazor server version. This is the mm -hmm. one that runs over that uh, live WebSocket connection. 
and we'll let that whole go ahead and create the project for me. So here's my app. I'm just going to go ahead and run this so we can see what it does. Oops, ran a little too fast. Uh -oh. well, that's just because the uh, NuGet Restore hadn't completed yet. Come down. And so what this app is going to give me is a, it's going to look like a, a simple single page application. It's going to have a number of a set of tabs and some components mm -hmm. that we can, we can play with as soon as it gets up and running. There it goes. All right, so on the Left-hand side here, we got a few tabs. We can click around. If we go back and forth with the browser nav tools, all of the um, uh, um, browser nav tools just work. That's client-side routing in, mm -hmm. in play. We're actually intercepting all those navigations client-side in the browser and just loading the correct component uh, accordingly. We're not actually having to go back to the server and mm -hmm. do a full page refresh. Cool. Uh, that's client-side cool. routing. On this counter page, we have a button that we can click, and the count goes up, and there's no page, ref page refresh happening here either. Yep. Normally, that would require you to write some JavaScript. Didn't have to write any JavaScript to make that happen. That's all done just with, with C Sharp. We can take a quick look at that counter page just so you can see what it looks like. Here's counter.razor. We'll zoom in just a little bit so we can see. And we've got a, a page directive at the top that just makes this component routable using mm -hmm. that client. Uh, uh, client-side routing uh, system. Got some static content where we're rendering the current count. Here we're using razor syntax to render the value of a C-sharp field. And then we got a button where every time we click the button, it increments the count. You can see this increment count method is what's uh, being wired up. Mm -hmm. uh, increments the field, the field gets updated, and then the page re-renders. So it's all C-sharp code, uh, no JavaScript required. Cool. I've been working on a, another slightly, slightly more involved app, but not too bad. Uh, for the conference next week. This is a simple recipe application where it just shows a list of recipes. This is, again, all written with, with C Sharp and Blazor. We can do some simple searches here where we search for a recipe, like I want to search for some soup. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's soup. Like they, they didn't have to go back to the server to do a full page refresh. That Unless was all. Unless it was to go and get the data, right? The, um, the data actually was retrieved at the, at the uh, initial load of oh, the application. Okay. And then we're just like fil doing uh, filtering and, and searching over that data with every keystroke in the, the search text okay. box. I can actually show you the, the search text box really fast. Yeah. So this is, you know, it's a little bit more code that's involved here, but it's just an Can input. You pop up that font. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Sorry. There we go. Oops. So we have an input, mm -hmm. and then we're binding this search query um, a string on, on input. So every text text stroke where we're going to go and, and trigger an event so that this component can do something with the data. This, this is a search text box, so we, want to, we don't want to do a search every single time I type a keystroke. We'd like to have a little delay, like maybe uh, wait you know, 300 milliseconds or something like that after I'm done typing and then okay. do the actual search. So we're using just a normal .NET timer that we're kicking off. Every time that mm -hmm. the search query property gets set using that bind, we start that timer. Well, we stop it if it's already running and then start it again. And once the timer completes, like if we got through the, the full 300 milliseconds before another keystroke was hit, then it just triggers this uh, search query changed event so that my parent component can then uh, filter the, mm -hmm. the set of recipes. We can see that on the home page. So if we go over to index.razor, here's the, the home page of the app. So at the top, we've got that search box, and we're wiring up to that search query changed event. And then we're just listing all the recipe cards. Again, another component that I, that I wrote to display each of the images and the mm -hmm. recipes. And then down below, whenever that uh, search query changed event fires, it calls this as a search method, yep. which then gives me the search query. And then I run it on my, my data store. Just C sharp code. Yep. I didn't have to write a line, line of JavaScript. Client to get that working. in the browser. That's Very right. cool. So that is Blazor. And uh, if you want to learn all about yes. it, like all about routing and JavaScript interop and data handling, all those, those mm -hmm. topics are going to be covered at this conference. In addition to some fun, fun new things that we're going to be sharing, uh, you should join us on January 14th uh, live on Channel 9. And if you miss that, I assume it'll be available on demand. All the videos will be available on YouTube. Uh, another cool thing, if you are, though, live, if you, instead of watching it later, the benefit mm -hmm. is, is that you can join us on Twitter mm -hmm. and ask questions of the speakers yep. live by using the, uh, uh, the hashtag .netconf. Cool. Focus.netconf.net. And that's Tuesday. And we'll see you there. Thanks so much for coming on. No problem. It's my pleasure. And we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.